Bitcoin breaks through $44,000 and even closes the daily candle above resistance. As meme coins start to pop off, including Pepe and others, are we about to see an altcoin season very soon? And Coinbase releases an incredible, incredible feature where you can easily send USDC via iMessage, WhatsApp, and much more. And Patrick McHenry, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, is unfortunately retiring. What does this mean for the subpoena against Gary Genser and the two crypto bills in the House? We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, Bitcoin continues its bullish momentum. Today, it crossed $44,000 multiple times. And right now, it's sitting at $43,834. The market is looking very bullish. In fact, Bitcoin closed its daily candle above resistance. So showing a lot of strength, folks. And that's what we want to see. Bitcoin is the rising tide that lifts all boats. The more Bitcoin pumps, the more liquidity that goes into Bitcoin, the more liquidity will flow from Bitcoin to the altcoins. And we know after Bitcoin usually pumps and hits its overbought scenario or the top of its rally, whether that's a retracement move or to an all-time high, uh, we see an alt season follow. And I'm ready for both. So I set my sell orders, uh, limit orders for Bitcoin uh, to sell at certain price points, and I'll be doing the same for alts. Now, uh, we look at the chart here, incredibly bullish. And what we're also seeing is that reports of meme coins are starting to pop off. So here's the report by Decrypt. Meme coin trading in full frenzy as Pepe pops 26% to hit $666 million in market cap. But it's not just Pepe. Larger cap meme coins like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu are also seeing a big surge. Folks, if you've been here in the last bull market cycle, we've seen this story before. If you were here since 2017 like I was, we've seen this story multiple times. So Bitcoin, like I said, the rising tide that lifts all boats. So expect meme coins, all coins, all these things to start moving. And we could see an incredible alt season once Bitcoin finishes its pump. And we continue to see mainstream media is covering this. They're pumping it, if you want to call it that. CNBC going nuts, covering Bitcoin, talking about the ETF and much more. Crazy price predictions are starting to pop up. In fact, Anthony Pompliano, they brought him on to CNBC. And he hasn't been on here for a long time, folks. So it tells you what's on the horizon, right? I believe this is a buy the rumor, sell the news. Bitcoin going to the 48 to 50K range. Then it will roll over and test uh, the 30K support level. Uh, the liquidity will flow to alts and they start popping off. I believe new all-time highs coming in 2025. Now, folks, we got big news from Coinbase Wallet. Uh, they released an amazing feature that I believe will help increase adoption of crypto. Uh, the ability to send a USDC stable coin for free using iMessage and WhatsApp. So you can send money just like you send text messages. That's incredible, folks. In order for the mainstream crowd to come in who are may, who may not be tech savvy, you need to make it frictionless. It needs to be easy. It needs to be part of existing apps and products that they use. So this is a big move by Coinbase and obviously very huge for USDC stablecoin. Uh, incredible, incredible stuff. So this was covered by Fortune Crypto. And a big shout out to the folks at Coinbase, man. This is huge. Very bullish news, folks. Uh, I was very surprised by this move. If you recall, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg tried to do this and they shut down his stable coin, right? Which was going to be backed by a, a basket of currencies. So very interesting moves happening here. Now, some other bullish news around Circle and USDC uh, was tweeted out by Jeremy Allaire, the co-founder and CEO of Circle. He said, Circle launches major new partnerships with Nubank, dramatically expanding USDC access in Brazil through one of the largest digital banks in the world with 85 million retail customers in Brazil alone. Folks, Nubank is a digital bank. Who's in invested in that? Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. These guys are invested in it. And incredible partnership for Circle. 
USDC is being injected into many countries in Latin America and Brazil, uh, 85 million retail customers. Now, you may say, Tony, well, you know, what is that? How does that benefit me? Well, first, look at which blockchains the USDC stablecoin is running on, many different blockchains. So you want to be holding the tokens of those said blockchains. In addition, you can use the USDC stablecoin and, uh, you know, platforms like Coinbase offer interest on it. I personally have some USDC stablecoin on Coinbase. I'm earning interest and I'm actually earning more than I would earn in the bank, folks. So uh, there's many opportunities. So this is huge for crypto adoption. The infrastructure, all the payment rails are being set up here. Pretty incredible. Now, a platform where you can invest in stable coins is Uphold. Uh, not only stable coins, but Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. Uphold is a great platform. I've been using them since 2018. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. They're available in over 150 countries. They have a great platform, a great app. And folks, they are secure. They are fully reserved. They don't co-mingle or lend out your funds. You can go review their reserve report and view the audits and much more. So uh, once again, I've been using them for a long time. I've interviewed the CEO, CFO. Uh, they even partner with Ripple to be uh, one of the exchange liquidity partners. So a really great platform. Like I said, I trust this platform. I can vouch for it. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, folks, some not so good news. It's kind of bittersweet. You know, Patrick McHenry, he is retiring. And of course, he's the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. And he's the one that's been putting a lot of pressure on Gary Genser. Don't get me wrong. He's not the only one. There's Warren Davidson, there's Tom Emmer, French Hill, and so forth. But obviously, Patrick McHenry was the one leading the charge on many things, threatening a subpoena against Gary Genser. So what does this mean for the crypto bills as well as the subpoena against Gary Genser? Well, folks, I'm going to be interviewing Congressman French Hill tomorrow, so I'll try to get those answers for you. I think the crypto bills still have a strong chance of pushing it through because there's many um, crypto advocates in the House. But will the subpoena happen to Gary Genser? I don't think so. I think that's off the table now. Honestly, uh, unless somebody else comes in and picks up where Patrick McHenry left off, so he, you know, he said he's looking forward to spending time with his family and seeing what's next. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit disappointed that he is uh, retiring here or stepping down. But, um, you know, he, he's got to do what's best for him. So I, I can't hate on that. Here's what Justin Slaughter, policy director of Paradigm, had to say on the news. He said Representative McHenry has or was termed out as chair of the Financial Services Committee after 2024. So this was expected by a lot of people. Representative Frank Lucas of Oklahoma is next in seniority to lead the GOP on the House Financial Services Committee, followed by Representative Pete Sessions out of Texas. Now, I had interviewed Congressman Pete Sessions uh, back in 2021, I believe, and he's a big Bitcoin crypto advocate. Uh, Texas is doing a lot of Bitcoin mining. So let's see. Hopefully we get another pro-crypto chairman and we'll see where things go. Like I said, I'll ask Congressman French Hill what comes next for this. Um, now, folks, we had an interesting hearing today with the SEC officials and the House Financial Services Committee, where Tom Emmer and others went after them. And uh, Tom Emmer brought up the Bill Hinman emails and the double standard of the Ethereum speech, uh, you know, get not giving uh, the rest of the market clarity and how, you know, the SEC kept having double standards saying the, the speech was uh, Bill Hinman's personal opinion. Then the next time it's not his personal opinion it's the agency's opinion so he did a great job calling them out now i'm not going to play the clips you guys have probably seen it and also here's the thing i understand there's a, pro a process to all of this let's see what actions are taken it's good to have a hearing it's good to say all these things what are the next steps right folks i think you all agree with me there so we'll see what comes out of this here ripple's chief legal officer Stuart Alderati highlighted that speech and he's, or the conversation, the video that was shared by Tom Emmer saying, as usual, the SEC has no adequate responses to uh, Congressman Emmer's questions. So the person they were interviewed is Valerie, uh, if I can pronounce her last name, Skeponik. <laughs> I, I apologize, I butchered that. But anyway, uh, she couldn't say anything, right? Oh, I can't talk about this. I can't talk about that. But you know, Tom Emmer, I think, did a great job because he highlighted how her and all the other folks were re reviewing the Hinman speech, yet they're trying to say it's Hinman's personal opinion, right? It's 
We know of the uh, conflicts of interest there and the ethics office of the SEC warned Hinman, hey, don't give that speech, buddy. The law firm you're still getting paid by is part of the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. Yeah. So uh, pretty crazy how far the SEC has fallen from its core mission of protecting investors to become corrupt. Now, attorney John Deaton weighed in on this as well. He said, uh, Congressman Tom Emmer using the Hinman emails with the SEC's alleged crypto czar to prove what we all know. These lawyers have lost their sight of why they have a job, which is to protect investors. They don't. They protect themselves and, and their agendas. They don't respect the law. They sure as hell don't follow it. Spot on. Even the judges are saying these things, right? It's not, you could say, well, John's a pro crypto guy. That's why he's saying that. No, the judges who have nothing to do with crypto are saying this. In the grayscale situation, the SEC was arbitrary and capricious. In the Ripple lawsuit, Judge Sarah Netburn, the SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. Incredible, right? Just recently with the debt box situation, the SEC attorneys lying and falsifying information where the judge is like, I'm going to sanction you guys. So we are seeing across the board failure by the SEC no allegiance to the law, lies, hypocrisy, and much more. Now, on a state level, you know, I live in New Jersey, and New Jersey introduces a, an act or a bill called A5747, which would define all virtual currencies sold to institutional investors as securities. This is such a dumbass bill I tweeted out here. And in fact, because I live in New Jersey, it's one of the states that put down a lot of heavy laws where I lost the ability to stake on exchanges like Coinbase. It's pathetic uh, what's happening here, but this is why we got to keep fighting. And I'm going to work with local folks here and local governments. Um, I'm going to try to get Congressman Josh Gothheimer, who's pro crypto on the podcast, try to work with his team and folks there and see what I can do. I'm in the battle, guys. I hope you recognize it. we got to call a representative, make content and stop all this nonsense. Clearly, they are trying to kill crypto startups, slow it down. They don't want you to earn a higher yield on your crypto. They want to make everything a security so they can control it like they did in the TradFi world. But that's not going to happen. Disruption is at their door. Now, folks, uh, I want to talk about Helium. I personally don't hold a Helium token, but I, I think it's big news here. So unlimited Helium mobile cell plan goes nationwide for $20 a month. Nova Labs will hope to grow Helium's hotspot network to reduce backup coverage costs paid to T-Mobile. Since its 2019 launch, the Helium network has used tokens to reward individuals deploying nodes via its growing decentralized wireless network. On Tuesday, the network's developer announced that users throughout the U.S. can now tap into unlimited data, talk, and text for $20 per month through cell service provided by Helium Mobile in tandem with T-Mobile. Nova Labs, the company behind the Helium network, has been building to the nationwide phone plan launched since partnering with T-Mobile in September 2022. But the milestone comes with a question of how Nova Labs can generate revenue from the notoriously unprofitable Helium network. The Helium network is designed for individuals to run hotspot nodes from their homes or businesses in exchange for rewards paid out in Solana-based mobile tokens. Currently, Nova Labs offers a hybrid cell service where users connect via its decentralized network and T-Mobile takes over anytime Helium hotspots can't provide coverage. So folks, look, we are still very early and a lot of these things are still being built out. This could be a great project and do well, and I'm going to look in more into it. The fact that they have a partnership with T-Mobile is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, but I'm not invested in everything. You can't invest in everything. It's not possible. I'm sure some of you listening have some of the Helium tokens. I, like I said, I don't, but if I do add it to my portfolio, I'll let you know. So we'll see where this goes, but um, it's really great that uh, you know they are expanding. So uh, Blockworks previously reported that Nova Labs applied similar logic to its cellular network uh, deployment in Miami. These plans are currently $5 per month, and the company loses money on every new subscriber. The Helium network pays out boosted rewards to coverage providers in high-traffic areas in Florida. Though more expensive than in Miami, the nationwide price of the $20 per month still makes the Helium mobile phone plan much less expensive than what legacy cell carriers charge. Unlimited plans from T-Mobile, Nova Labs partner start at $60 per month. So folks, I, I, I like the idea. I think we're headed to a decentralized world. But as we saw in the dot-com boom, sometimes some ideas are too early, right? 
Pets.com failed in the dot-com bubble, but Pets.com now is doing well, right? You just look at Chewy. Pets.com was trying to be Chewy.com. It's just, it wasn't the right time. So that could be the case here. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it could be. And, uh, you know, if they are able to maintain themselves through multiple bull and bear markets and over time fine tune the game plan, the service, the product, they could get incredible adoption, folks. Once again, because we're headed to a decentralized token economy. So we'll see where this goes. Do you hold a helium token? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, here's another example of real world adoption how Myth, M I T H, brought Jack Harlow fans to the blockchain. So many of you know Jack Harlow as an artist. Uh, Myth's Warner Music Group backed fan engagement platform combines straightforward UX with Web3 verification tools. Folks, it's incredible where we're headed. And like I said, the token economy, everything running on the blockchain. So Myth is a Polygon-based fan engagement startup that partnered with Harlow to offer on-chain VIP tickets for the rapper's recent mini tour in Kentucky. The company created on-chain records of attendance at the shows, but its founders told BlockWorks they are taking a mullet approach to get users on board. Web 2 in the front, Web 3 in the back. In the future, Myth will launch platforms for creatives to monetize fan interactions and for fans to accrue rewards and collectibles, with the on-chain pieces happening behind the scenes. So folks, clearly they're working with a big label, which is Warner Music Group, and obviously a, a good-sized artist. And the key part here, you may say, well, what does this matter to me? It's running on Polygon. So if you hold a Matic token, that's good news. This is why I br always bring up the example of which blockchains are being adopted, and do you hold the native tokens? That's how I'm approaching this. Who's getting real-world adoption? Who's uh, getting the building and the developers on their platform? And are they building real-world applications? Are they, get par are, they, are they having partnerships with real companies, not just crypto startups? Which is fine. That's fine. But traditional uh, music or tech or retailers or whatever it is, right? Are, are they getting those type of partnerships? And that's key. All right, finally, Boston Fed seeks software engineer for CBDC research. The LinkedIn post states that the position would be support the Federal Reserve CBDC research and development program. Folks, CBDCs are coming. Similar to what I've been saying, which blockchains? I'm very curious as to which blockchains will be selected. We've seen the XRP Ledger, Ethereum, and others, H H Hedera as well, be used um, to pilot. The question is, you know, with these live CBDCs, which blockchains will they be on? And that's what I'm excited to see. I think this will be another factor that drives the value up of those set blockchains. So very bullish times ahead. I hope you see the groundwork, the infrastructure, what's being laid here for mass adoption in many different ways and the token economy that is upon us. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. Folks, Please subscribe for my free email newsletter on Substack, link in the description. Also follow me on Twitter or X, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok. Links will be in the description. The follow doesn't cost you anything, but it supports the podcast a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.